CapCut is by far the most accessible and fully featured smartphone video editing app that is completely free. It's got a bunch of features that generally would only be available on very expensive mobile editors or on desktop software that's used for editing video. And sometimes you just wanna edit video that's on your phone because that's where you upload it. So it makes it perfect for Instagram Reels, TikToks, YouTube Shorts, any form of short form video that you have shot on your phone that you wanna cut. In this video, I'm gonna be as comprehensive about as many of these features as I can be, but some of them are really complex. And if you want a deep dive on that, please let me know because I can do a whole separate video on a couple of these. I mean, it's got some really advanced video editing features like keyframing, motion graphics, typography, uh, chroma keying, like green screen, automatic AI removal of people subject matter shots. It's wild that they managed to achieve that. And it's 90% of what you would find on a traditional professional video editing piece of software on your PC. I'm gonna move over there to go through this, but if there's something specific that you're looking for, I've actually included all the timestamps in the description. So you can skip directly to that, maybe even save this video, bookmark it for later, if there's a feature that you wanna get into yourself. Let's move over. I'm really excited to let you know that this video is sponsored by AMD and PC Builder. PC Builder is a brand new way to build and buy your PC here in South Africa. Choose from a selection of extremely well-priced pre-built rigs or go ahead and start building your PC with no experience required. Start by choosing the games that you want to play, then setting your budget, and the AI will choose a build that's perfect for you. Use that rig as a starting off point and configure your build further to get more granular with your PC gaming needs. The AI will even tell you what frame rate the games you've selected will get and at which resolution they're going to perform at. It'll even tell you what your power consumption will be so that you get the right power supply. You're choosing your build based on its benchmarks before you buy it instead of guessing and testing after it's arrived. You can add accessories and peripherals before you check out if you need them and in case you want to buy it later or double check the pricing with a friend, you can save it to your profile and make sure that you get the right build for you. You can even give your build a name. I'm giving away a PC that we're building on my Twitch stream worth around 25,000 Rand. So to enter, send me your AMD PC build that you've saved under your profile using the link to the competition under this video. For more information, make sure that you check out the pinned comment on this video or the link in the description for details on how to enter. T's and C's apply. So first up, when you open up CapCut, you're gonna be introduced to this page where it's got an auto cut feature or open a project feature. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch of projects that I have edited in the past um, and a whole bunch of templates over here um, that I've used. But let's just quickly touch on AutoCut. I'm not going to go into it, but AutoCut is very exciting. AutoCut is a tool that you can use inside of uh, CapCut that will automatically cut a video for you um, using a different kind of tone or a kind of music track that you want to uh, that you want to go into. It's very cool, great for montages, but not exactly what you want if you want to get really granular with how you edit. So firstly, you'll select new project. Once we're in new project. Here is where you're going to be selecting your media. So I'm actually just going to select some video clips that I've shot. Actually, yeah, some stuff that I've shot today for fun. This is just, this is nothing major. I'm just going to take four clips, nothing huge, and just kind of put them into a timeline. How this works now is the, the main screen, the preview window that you are seeing right there where the keyboard is, that's what your video looks like. At the top left, you can exit your edit. Top right, you can choose the resolution that you would like to be uh, expo exporting in and the frame rate that you like to export in. And then that arrow with next to the resolution is the export button. The bottom of the screen is the timeline. This piece of information, as you can see, you can just scrub through it with your finger. That will just show you uh, everything in order chronologically as, you've, as you selected them in the previous uh, screen. If you pinch in on your timeline, you'll be able to zoom out. So you'll be able to see more of your timeline and then if you pinch out like this, you'll be able to see uh, more of the clip and kind of zoom in on where you are going to be editing, which is super helpful. Uh, on the left is something really cool that not a lot of people know of. It's this cover button. This cover button allows you to select a frame from your project to be used as a cover image. Like So when you upload this to TikTok, it's the image that TikTok recognizes as your cover image. Now at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a whole bunch of different workspaces. These workspaces allow you to 
functionally edit uh, the, the footage in front of you. So let's start right from the left and start with edit. Once you click on edit, wherever your playhead is, it will then highlight that uh, clip. So this is the clip that we've highlighted. And as you can see, a whole bunch of contextual uh, effects uh, have come up under the edit button. First here, you can split your clips. If you press it, it will just cut the clip where it is. Uh, you also have speed ramping, which is amazing. Speed ramping allows you to either speed up your clip two times all the way through, change the pitch of your, the sound of your voice to match it or not match it. Or if you go to curve, you click on curve, you can ramp your speed according to a curve. So like if we do like a hero montage, Look how cool that looks. That looks really cool. I'm just gonna zoom in quick and select it. Go back to speed, go to my curve, and I can edit this curve how I'd like. So if I want it to be even faster over here and drop down even slower, you'll see that it, it acts appropriately. You can even make it smoother for better or faster uh, processing, depending on what kind of phone you have, but it's, it's there for you. At the top right-hand side, you can add a beat, which is uh, literally a, a, a kind of like a keyframe. So we'll press play. Hey, look how fancy that is. There are these default ones, like jump cuts, flash ins, uh, that slow down, flash out, which is slow and goes into fast. And you can edit those according to however you'd like. So let's get out of that and move into the rest of this. Next to speed, we've got animation. If you click on animation, you can either animate the particular clip that you've highlighted in or out or both. So let's click on in. And there are all these incredible motion graphics transitions in. So shake in, you can choose the duration at the bottom here with the slider. So if you want it to go in longer, six second shrug, that's really slow. Uh, rock in vertical, uh, spinning left. You can play around, there's just so many. Uh, I like to use these zoom ones as well, um, especially really short ones. It's such an effective way. I'm just scrubbed through the timeline, put my thumb there, press play and have a look at this. Wow, it looks so cool. And then obviously you can slide out, uh, zoom out as well. Sliding in left and right, which is really cool. Rotating in, literally get as creative as you want. The out, obviously it will it will do the same thing, animate that same animation out, or you can do a combo of the two. So uh, if you want to do the same thing in and out, this animation will then, as you can see, we should animate out, there we go. Use the same animation that, that you've selected to do in or out. Play around, you're gonna find the right animation for you. It's just a nice way to make things a little bit more dynamic. Next to animation, we've got style. Now, in order to use style, we're gonna to have to have a picture of a subject matter or video footage of a subject matter. So let me add something quick. To so add a clip, what you do is that you see the plus on the timeline over here on the far right, you click on that. Let's scrub through this. <laughs> I'm gonna choose a piece of footage. Actually, this is a piece of footage I, I shot of Jess a while back. Let me zoom in. So now that I've added this clip of Jess, we can actually do a bunch of things. So let me just select it, sorry, there we go, style. Some of the effects aren't available for some reason. I'm not 100% sure why, but uh, let's add one that is available. Uh, some really cool ones, like let's do some 3D cartoon. It's gonna do some generation. It's gonna, it's gonna program what it's gonna look like. Um, uh, and as you can see, it's done something and turned Jess into, there we go, into a cartoon character, which uh, is terrifying. Uh, and I highly recommend deleting that effect. But let's try this freeze frame one. A lot of these effects are some of the reasons you've seen TikTok trends. Uh, th they will use a lot of these effects and this is where they get them from. Boom. This effect works better when people are moving in and out so that they're not uh, bothering. But yes, you get the idea. If you want to delete your clip next to style, there's delete. That will literally remove the clip from the timeline. Let me do that. And then, and then you've got something called remove background. So if you click on remove background, you can either chroma key or remove background with the AI. So if I click remove background, it's going to find the subject and rudiment rudiment rudimentary, roughly cut out the person from the foreground. You often see this when people react to things behind them on TikTok. This is how they do that if they just shoot it in a, a normal environment. And then you've got something called chroma key. Chroma key is something that you would have if you want to delete a color. It's usually a green screen. You can select that green and then remove that green. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color pick something on the image. It'll be this white, but you'll see now it's gonna delete most of Jess, because her clothing is white, um, and 
did that. Why does that not work? Oh, there we go. The intensity is low. Um, if we slide it up, you just can see it can get rid of all of that. Oh, your teeth. It's even more terrifying. And then wherever that color is will be transparent. So you can uh, hold up a green piece of paper and remove whatever was on that paper, for instance, or something on a screen. Just fill your, if you're filming a screen, fill that screen with a singular color that's not in the rest of the environment. Then you can replace it with whatever footage you'd like. Let's get rid of the chroma key. We're not going to delete the background. That's how you do that. You can change the volume of this specific clip if you're shooting a couple of clips and they have different volumes. You can extract the audio from that clip so you can have it as a separate item on your timeline so you can actually literally select that and move that across let's undo if you want to undo by the way underneath the image you'll see a play that's a keyframe button we'll get back to the keyframes and then an undo if we do undo it'll undo the last action there's obviously a redo button there too so it brings back that action so let's undo that uh, and then let's kick back onto our clip you also have edit edit is a just a way to rotate mirror your image Crop your image if you want to get it into the shot a certain way. That's where you'll do any basic editing like that. Then you can add filters. People often think of this stuff as like Instagram filters, but you can see there's some really cool things that you can do and adjust, and you can adjust the intensity with the slider at the bottom. All of these filters are free, literally free with CapCut. And you could use different themes, I guess. Eclipse, which would be like, a, they want that to be a food thing. Movies, if you want it to look cinematic. Uh, and then I do recommend dropping down the opacity. That's very nice. Black and white, if you want to do some monochromatic stuff. Oh, that's also really nice. Now, if you want to apply this filter to everything, you just, there's, at the bottom left, there's an apply to all button. You can press that. Then on the top left, next to filters, you can fine adjust anything you want to. Exposure, saturation, contrast, brightness, whatever you'd like. Because I have a clip of someone's face, this is obviously, I'm gonna include, you can follow Jess on socials on screen. There is an enhance button. This button will allow you to enhance your, your face, either your shape, change the, your eye size. It's literally like video face tune. Again, 100% free. You can brighten a face. We can whiten teeth if you'd like to. You can retouch, uh, wow, retouch someone's face. Yo, that worked out really well. I actually don't do this a lot. I'm really impressed with that. This program never ceases to amaze me, to be honest. Then this is a very important one. Next to enhance is mask. Mask allows you to take the current piece of footage and mask it out. Like as, as if you were taking, uh, cutting out a section of it on a piece of paper. So I've just made a circle right now. You can have a rectangle, you can have a heart or whatever. You can change this button over here. It will change the the feathering, which is the blur on the sides of the particular shape. Uh, you can change the feathering like this is, I, I like a harsh feather. And then you can just choose the, where you would like the mask to be. And you can increase it in size. If you want to keep it at its aspect ratio, you just pinch with two fingers and that will pinch. And now you've masked the subject in the center of wherever your shape is, which is very, very cool. This is helpful. I sometimes react or have my face still on screen with footage underneath it. This is how you would do that inside CapCut. There's also an invert button, by the way, on the top bottom left of here that will invert the mask. So instead of wherever the circle is, if you invert it, it'll be, the other area will be the one on display. But for now, let's not do anything. Right next to mask is the thing that I was just talking about, overlay. So if you add something as overlay, uh, what it does is it pops over the footage on the timeline. So it's essentially above it. It's a little deceiving because on the timeline, as you can see, the footage is actually below. But all the different tracks, all the different tracks, texts, um, adjustment filters, all that stuff appears below the timeline and will expand when you're on that particular sub menu. Because we've got this as uh, an overlay right now, the two, the two videos are playing at the same time. I can also split, cut that, change the speed, volume, the, the thing that's different here is splice. If you add splice, what it's gonna do is it's gonna mix or blend, these are called blend modes, with the footage underneath. So you can get this really cool effect if you wanna be creative uh, with the footage below you. We obviously have the animation button, the same as the in and out, uh, and the combo button that we saw previously. Deleting that clip if you wanna get rid of it, or remove background. Now this is helpful, again, you can remove background and then because it's overlay, whatever underneath it pops out and shows off. <laughs> you can replace the footage. You can add a new style uh, like we did earlier with the, the different uh, effects. 
we can choose the layer, order the layers. So if there's more than one piece of overlay, we can make sure that another piece of overlay is above that one. The new thing here is main track. As you can see, main track is you can swap it back over to not be overlay, put it back into the, to the main track. But I'm going to undo that because I actually want it as overlay. This is where masking becomes interesting. So like in this case, this is a tool that I use a fair amount on my TikToks and have my face in the footage with the footage underneath it. See what I mean by having this kind of functionality on, on a piece of software that is ostensibly free. It's, it's, un, it's, un, it's, it's wild. It's unheard of. You can stabilize your footage. You can reduce the noise in your image like this. This is if you've shot a dark environment and there's a lot of like grain on the screen, you can get rid of it. We have opacity. That's really self-explanatory. This literally just changes the opacity of the layer above the layer below it, of course, so we can see through it. We can add some voice effects. So, you know, funny audio effects like high, low, mic hog, echo, distortion, low battery, whatever you'd like. This is just a great creative tool if you want to express yourself creatively. Like maybe you want to have somebody on the phone, you've got effects like that, which can sound like on the other end, you can pretend you're on the phone and somebody else can hear you, which is really cool. You can copy your clip, then we can like literally duplicate it. I'm going to delete it though, because we don't want it that. You can reverse the clip. That'll make sure that it plays from right to left not left to right, and it will take some time. So if you've recorded something like, here's a pro tip, if you're doing a tech channel, you unplug or you wanna plug in a, a cable into a shot, just plug it in and then remove it and then reverse the shot and it looks like it's working out. You can freeze frame a particular part of the footage and it basically spits out an image for you, which is very cool, um, especially if you wanna do some cool effects. It's, very, it's much easier than screen grabbing it and then adding that screen grab and trying to match it, it's a huge headache. You've got motion blur. Motion blur allows you to blur as the uh, subject is moving. So let's see what this looks like. Nice dreamlike effect, actually. But if you're doing anything sports related, that's pretty cool. And then you've got graphs. Now graphs work with something called keyframes. And I'm actually gonna jump into keyframes right now. I'm gonna go out of the uh, edit tab. We've done everything in the edit tab. Firstly, as you'll notice in front of you, the uh, overlay is a line on top of your timeline that if you want to click on that overlay, you open it up, you just click on it and then it will open it up. And this is what you're editing below the timeline. If you go off of it, if you leave this uh, contextual menu, it'll hide the overlay for you so that you could focus. You're working on a phone. You don't want to have all this real estate focusing on other things. So you can actually focus on what you are doing. But let's go to the overlay. Underneath the video I mentioned earlier, you've got something called keyframes. This was a huge thing for me specifically because I've always wanted video editors to have keyframes. So when you are scrubbing through your timeline, it's highlighted, you can add a keyframe, that dot over there, and whatever attributes you add at that particular point in the timeline, that's when those effects will occur. So if you want to, uh, here's, here's an idea. So let's, let's add another keyframe quite close to this one, like over here. And I would like to change the size of the clip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch in, I'm just gonna zoom in on Jess's mouth and nose like this. Then if I scrub back, the keyframe will remember the last location and then bam, it will zoom in. So that gives you some really cool creative ways to get dramatic and interesting with your content and then add effects to those keyframes. It's going to get it back to where it was and delete these keyframes. If you want to delete a keyframe, actually, you, you hover over it and then there'll be a minus sign next to the diamond and then it will go away, which is very cool. And then you can actually use graphs. So if you're doing speed ramps or if you wanted to like for instance, we zoomed in on, on, uh, on Jess's face, maybe we want it to go a lot faster, we can do that or slower, we can do that with the graphs tab. So let's duck out of that. Next up, we have audio. This contextual menu allows us to either add sounds, as you can see, if you go to the sounds tab, add effects, you can search for extracted audio that you might have on your phone, say there's a video that you liked and you want that audio, so you've downloaded something off of YouTube, or if you have uh, downloaded a TikTok onto your phone, you can literally extract that audio, or you can record your own voice. So let's start with sounds. This will go into a menu of completely free music for you to use, which is really exciting. You can sign in with your TikTok, that, so whenever you do anything in TikTok, like you save a song or save a, a track, 
it will come up for you to use. You can select, go through all of these, and you can literally add this particular track to your... Nice. You can add this to your, to your timeline right there, wherever the cursor was. If you want to move it, you hover your finger over it, and you just drag it. You just go all the way through to the, to the end. On the left hand side of the timeline you can see there's a mute clip audio that means your main timeline you can completely mute which which i'm going to do now because i'm actually i don't want to have any audio background audio if you were filming and there were kids screaming on the beach and some background noise that's going to irritate your really nice montage get rid of it you can do that by just one click uh, unmuting that uh, or muting that audio on the on the side let's go back in sounds if you go to this is your tiktok sounds obviously there's nothing there uh, if you go to the folder, these are some of your extracted sounds. Uh, you can also go to songs on your device. I have an Epidemic Sound account, by the way. And if you look in the description, there is a uh, an affiliate link that you can follow. If you click, if you if you have an Epidemic Sound account, you can download songs using the Epidemic Sound app straight to your phone, and you can edit, uh, add them to your tracks simply and easily like that. This is a recommended one based on your previous history. And then your favorite sounds so you can if you favorited a sound so the little star next to each track if i favorite these three and go to the favorites they will all be there let's duck out our add sounds and add effects so this is more like what professional film editors would call foley these are sound effects that you would add so if you want to add cheers or if you want to add a baseball victory sound camera whistles Extracted is like if there is a track that you have, uh, let's choose one of Jess, there's audio here. If I add this, what it will do, it, it won't add the footage, but it will add the audio track. So that's audio track at the bottom here. So that way you can maybe screen record a section of an audio book and, that you really liked and add that uh, that audio straight into your timeline if you want to do something like that. I don't condone any illegal behavior, but you know how it'd be. Once you've added your sound, again, the contextual menu is super important. When you click on the particular sound, you can obviously change the volume of the sound. You can fade in and out. So you can have, you know, the music come in or music fade out. You can split the clip, which is your way of cutting it. Uh, you can add voice effects to it, or you can match cut. Match cut is a way for the software to add markers to a, to a song. So if you have a song out there where it thinks the beat is, and then it will help you with those keyframes and those, those particular markers to edit to that particular track. So if I choose the song, for instance, and I click match cut, I can either auto generate it or I can add a beat. So. Okay, great. So I can either do that and those markers are there. If I click yes, you'll be able to see them on the timeline under Lazy Sunday. So I can add some clips to that and get my montage going. But if I really want to, and I am feeling super fancy, you can auto generate it and I can add this beat. And as you can see, those dots auto generated throughout the track. And I can use those as visual markers to edit to an audio track. Lastly, we've got record. Record is as straightforward as possible. You bring this up. I can press and hold to record. I can just do a voiceover. So a lot of people do this, what, what I call uh, retrospective vlogs. You know, you'll do an event or you'll go to like a flea market or something and people film. And this is how they record the audio over it. I mean, how powerful so far? So that's audio. Let's get on to text. Text is super easy to understand. There's ad text. There's a text template, there's auto captions, auto lyrics, so which is really important, stickers and draw. Th these are some of the most used features in CapCut and a lot of other high-end software like Premiere Pro keeps this stuff behind massive paywalls. I add text, right? You can add text, I can go fart. I don't know why I'm doing the fart thing. Uh, and then you'll see there's text over here. You can make it bigger, you can duplicate it in the bottom corner over here. So then there's two of them. I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to click on this and then I can edit this to be however I want. Fart. Zoid. Great. Um, I didn't even spell Zoid right. But uh, you know what? It's the way forward. Okay, we've got subscribe. All right. Once you've got your text like this, you can either you can execute, 
it will come up at the bottom here. As you can see, everything else that is unaffected by just text is now a line. The music, the voiceovers, all that stuff. So if I click on subscribe, you'll see that the contextual menu underneath is bringing up some really cool options. So firstly, we can again split it or we can add style. Style is, as you think, text, different fonts, different styles that you can add to a particular piece of uh, font, piece of font, piece of, piece of copy, as we say in the industry. Um, this font is disgusting. I have to change it. There we go. That's better. You can add stroke, the canvas background. You can shadow, spacing uh, between uh, each of the lines or the characters. That's, we called it kerning. Don't know why it's called spacing these days. Bold, bold, italic, underscore. All the things that you'd expect there to be in a, in, a, in a tech styler. But the exciting part is that they've got this effects button. And the effects button allows you to apply a series of effects to your particular piece of, of, of text. Wow, I'm really bad at saying that. This is really important because a lot of really expensive software like uh, After Effects usually do this kind of stuff and it costs a lot of money being able to add neon lights to your to your text and so on um, and there's a whole bunch of different themes depending on what kind of content creator you are then you can add like holding bubbles like this there subscribe wow we've just come up with this and now you can add an animation so you can like glitch it in it's just it's just really really cool <laughs> <laughs> that you can do this and you can execute and then all of a sudden we've got this really cool piece of text that animates in to your screen. Text to speech is cool because you can type out something if you're nervous to say something or for comedic effect you rather have a robotic voice say it. This is how people do it. You type it out and you do text to speech and then one of these people will say subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Subscribe. That sounds terrifying. Then you can copy that particular piece of text you can delete it you click on lasting text and this expands it throughout the duration of the whole video you might not want to do that you might want to just have it on screen for a short period of time or you can animate it in again and choose that animation in or out there's some really cool actual animations here like there's the glitching and uh, jolt forward and ease left and right it's very cool and you can get it also to loop as well so if you want a uh, yeah, waves. Waves is a cool thing to loop. And then, wow, actually, that doesn't look cool at all. But you, you get my drift. You can get it to work. Then we've got the effects and the bubble, and then tracking. Tracking is r also pretty awesome. So with tracking, you can select a piece of the footage. Let's go with... Um, this is not a moving piece of footage. So let me just duck out of this. Let me bring the text over to that footage that I had of... Jess, where is it? Uh, let's just have it over here, this overlay. So I'll go like this. Let's go to tracking. And then I'll choose like her nose, that, or her, her eyes, probably the most easy. And then what it will do is it'll, it'll select a point of the footage and then track that piece of footage. I don't think it's working with the overlay or something. Oh no, no it is working with the overlay. It's having a bit of a tough time working out what is going on. But you understand how that works. It works better when there's something very distinct that is following. I've actually used it a lot with lens flares. Uh, you can add stickers and we're going to get to that a little bit. And you can get that sticker to track on whatever part of the piece of footage you want. You might want to blur out a license plate number or have a lens flare animate over a corner of a piece of phone or whatever the case is. So let's duck out of there. Auto captions is really cool. I'm not going to show you how it works right now because there's no real words in this particular video there's no narration but if you select it what it will do is it will create an another text layer with all the captions that it's found from people talking in your video and lay that as a text layer so then you can go in and you can edit even with a batch file edit all of that text as you go along so that you can change whatever copy is on screen it's one of the easiest ways to add subtitles to videos and for short form videos it's extremely extremely important to have subtitles in your videos because it increases engagement people want to be able to read what you're saying they might have the volume down and it helps accessibility if somebody can't hear they can actually still uh, consume what you're making then there's auto lyrics does the same thing but with songs uh there's here are the stickers these stickers are you know stuff like boring stuff to leading to some exciting stuff to progress bars i mean the how sick is this how sick is this so like we're doing like a gaming thing 
how cool. Again, you can add animation and tracking to that particular sticker. You can also draw on the screen. This is great for people like myself who've got uh, a Samsung device because we've got the S Pen. And because we've got the S Pen, we can draw on screen and have our own drawn sticker. There's a whole bunch of different colors, features. You can use, uh, you can use a pen, your finger as well, um, but it's really nice to have a pen and different uh, textures, different colors to be able to, to, to get on screen. I'm gonna do this, this is gonna be abysmal. We're completely demolishing this, this footage, but it's, it's all in the name of learning how the software works. If we go out, we go back to the main menu, we've got overlay. If you click on overlay, it will allow you to bring up that overlay uh, track. As you can see, it's visible. This was our only overlay track. And then add overlay from our gallery. The effects one is very cool. You can add body effects to your particular body. Body effects is really cool. So what it does is it allows you to add body effects to something that's on the timeline. I'm actually gonna bring it back, this particular footage back into uh, the main track. So what we'll do here is we'll add effects, body effects, add some laser eyes, <laughs> and there we go. We've got some laser eyes, we've got some, that is really sick. So if you've seen like really crazy effects that people are uploading to TikTok really fast, this is how they do them. Video effects are a very powerful way of being able to add like a really good looking treatments to a particular piece of footage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm making this soft, it will, it will affect everything on the main video because as you can see, it says main video. If I click on it, I can adjust certain things. I'm gonna extreme, make the soften extreme. Or I can replace that effect if I want to have something else that's a little bit more out there. As you can see, the layers stack. So I've literally got these, these laser eyes and the shockwave treatment on the same piece of footage which is also very cool and unexpected because it is a mobile device. Often these apps kind of throttle what you're capable of doing. When you select filters on this main menu section, you add a filter, let's add it. It will add an adjustment layer, well, equivalent to, to an adjustment layer in Premiere Pro. And it will apply this filter to whatever duration you've dragged out. As you can see, it'll just pop in here over the main track. But if I want to extend this filter, I can. This allows you to add multiple filters or apply an adjustment layer with, to the entire piece of footage if you wanna have that layer over a couple of tracks. You can obviously copy it so that you can use it later on if your video is long enough and there's a, a scene in the same environment that requires that effect, you can do that or you can delete it. Back to the main menu, we've got format. This will change the format of your video. Nine by 16 is the default because that's the default for all short form video. But 16 by nine, if you're going to do like a quick YouTube video or edit a YouTube video or a one by one, if you're gonna be doing like a square video or whatever is appropriate for whatever medium that you are editing in. Canvas is the area, if you'd like, where the footage exists on. So the color of whatever is underneath all of the footage. So you can change that color to red and you'll see now. So if I click on this particular piece of footage and I move it, the canvas is underneath and it is currently red. But I can also change that because that might not be the color that I want and I might want a pink one or whatever the case is. This means that when I, if I animate or do anything that reveals the canvas, there will be something underneath it. Or I can even just do it as a frame or something. So have it in the middle of this and then it will be smaller. Instead of a single color, you can also change the background of your canvas. Maybe it's a special occasion like Christmas and you want to have a Christmas background or you want to have something, what is this, a cardigan? What is this, your grand's house? Stars, glam, unicorns, whatever vibe you want for your particular content, you can achieve. It's all here under the canvas tab. Satin, ooh, days of our lives. And you can add a blur of the current footage. This is a really easy way to, if you're adding gameplay and you've recorded it at a different aspect ratio, like 16 by nine, you're adding it to a nine by 16 video and you wanna blur the background so it doesn't feel empty, then when you play it, it doesn't look out of place. It kind of fills the frame uh, really comfortably. And you can see the different degrees of blur. And lastly, you can click adjust. This opens up the adjustment layers that we were talking about in the filters tab. See, this is, here's our filters one, this, this filter that we've added to all the footage. So if I click adjustment, you can see it for what it is. And then you can add filters from here or you can add adjustments as you'd like. So maybe you don't want to filter, but you want it just to make the, make the exposure a little bit better. Just brighten it up a little bit or just do some minor tweaks, do some graphs if you'd like, and just do some contrast. Look at that, that's, that's a really 
a lot better. And that adjustment layer literally exists and they call it an adjustment layer. That's what a polish means. It's not polish, it says polish. You can polish your footage, I guess. And now we're ostensibly done with our edit. We've gone through all the different features. You'll find it's kind of annoying, I think, but they always have this like end plate with cap cut uh, there. So I always, without fails, one of the first things I do is I go in and I click delete so that there is no ending. So now we're ready to export. In the top right hand side, of uh, the screen, you'll see that there's the resolution that you might want to export it as. You can go all the way up to 4K and 2K, which is really exciting. 1080p, I think 1080p is perfect for TikTok, whatever. I would recommending, uh, I would recommend that you add a sharpen, a slight sharpen under your adjustments for social media. It just makes you stand out a little bit more above everybody else's. You can export under a certain frame rate if you shot in 50 or 60 frames a second which is really nice, especially if you're doing gameplay or if you've got a modern camera like my Samsung S22 Ultra, which does shoot in 4K. And once you've done that, you'll see there's an estimated file size. This is just gonna basically let you know what uh, it thinks the file size is gonna be. It's relatively accurate, but you know, it's so that you know that you've got enough space on your 32 gig phone if you've got a, a smaller size phone. Then the arrow in the top right-hand side of the screen, you click on it and it will export your video. Again, don't, don't lock your screen or exit CapCut. It's gonna cancel this export. Just let it do its thing. If you've got any filters, as you can see, it might struggle in some areas, but it's still going. It's just, it might take a little bit longer than usual. And now that it's exported, because CapCut is owned by TikTok, the first thing you see is a share to TikTok button, but you can send whatever you've edited through to WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, but if you don't want to share it yet, don't worry. It's saved to your device. As soon as it's finished rendering, it's in your gallery. So you can click done and your project will still be there. You don't have to click save. It's automatically saved for you. Go to your gallery. You'll find our video is right here and ready to be posted. And that's it. That's like your extreme overview of the abilities of CapCut. <sighs> If you found this video helpful in any way, please consider liking this video. It really helps us in this algorithmic landscape here on YouTube. And if there's anything specific that you would like me to get into, uh, make sure that you just put those requests in the comments. I'll be able to uh, answer you directly or I can produce a video for you uh, to help you out. I'll see you guys in another video. Cheers.